Hi, I'm Lewis, and my study is on thermoregulation in ectotherms, specifically the A. crustaster species, which is commonly known as the marine iguana. The marine iguanas are the only saltwater lizards in the world, and have the unique ability to forage for food in the ocean. It is found only in the Galapagos Islands, off the coast of South America, where they are located on the rocky shorelines. This species must use homeostasis to survive, however the focusing control system is called thermoregulation. But before we begin, we must first find out what thermoregulation actually is. Thermoregulation, in simple terms, is the ability for an organism to keep its body temperature within certain boundaries, even if the surrounding temperature is very different. Because iguanas are ectotherms, and therefore cold-blooded, they generally stay at the temperature of whatever their environment is. However, thermoregulation is essential for marine iguanas specifically, because these ectotherms face a challenge. The iguana's main food source, algae, is located near the sea, but the sea around the Galapagos Islands remains cold all year round, between 15 and 16 degrees Celsius, so marine iguanas must gain enough body heat for them to survive this disruption within their environment. Not only that, but the enzymes in the lizards only work at specific temperatures, and as you see from the diagram, if these temperatures become too low and go under optimum temperature, it can denature the enzyme and change the active site. Therefore, thermoregulation is shown to be a crucial system to ensure the survival of the iguanas within their habitat. Marine iguanas use all three types of thermoregulation mechanisms. Physiological, because they have the ability to increase or decrease their heart rate to adjust to its environment when resting. They have structural mechanisms, like fat around its stomach to contain its heat, or the orientation of their scales. However, because of the drastic changes in the environment throughout the year, behavioural methods are prominent to maintain their core body temperature. This is done by techniques such as piling, and the most obvious method, using the sun's rays as a homemade heater. Body temperatures in thermoregulating reptiles vary within individuals between day and night and between seasons. So marine iguanas must be able to increase their heart rate to elevate their cardiovascular output as well as resist small changes in the environment and can do this very quickly. As seen in the diagram at the 40 minute mark, the marine iguana was able to increase its heart rate up to 9 times faster in less than 2 minutes. And this allows them to reach the desired temperatures much faster. The olfactory bulb is the part of the iguana's brain that detects when it is cold. This then sends signals to the extrinsic controls which process the information and find the desired heart rate needed to warm up the iguana. Once it's done, this then sends impulses to the heart which is the effector, making more regular contractions and therefore pumping more blood around the body. This is a basic but crucial thermoregulatory system that iguanas use to increase their core body temperature. The marine iguanas also use behavioural techniques such as piling to generate heat when the temperatures are cold at night. They all pile on top of each other in order to prevent heat radiation from occurring and instead create convection currents throughout the lizard's blood, which allow them to keep a stable internal temperature throughout the night. However, during the daytime, if the iguana's core blood temperature is low, they use a different technique. They first detect their cold by using the olfactory bulb, which then sends a signal to the dorsal cortex where the information is processed. This is the control motor of the brain and thus sends signals to the limbs which cause the iguanas to move towards the uppermost rock where it is warmest. The iguanas bask in the sun, spreading their bodies to display the greatest amount of surface area. This way they can conduct heat through the rocks via lattice vibrations and can also radiate heat from the sun's rays because of their dark skin which allows them to absorb heat faster. These are key thermoregulation methods that enable the survival of the species. When the iguanas are heated to an optimum 45 degrees, they take to the water. Because the water is so cold, it becomes a disruption to the iguanas and they must adjust by using separate internal control systems and structural adaptations to get a maximum amount of food available whilst in or near the water. Because the scales are concaved and wrap over one another, it creates a pocket where the heat is stored, and this heat can then be released through the body via vessels that are directed towards the chest. These vessels can open and close and cause a flow of heat to regulate the body. Olfactory sensory neurons detect when the iguana is cold and sends information through their auxins to the olfactory bulb. 
This then sends electrical pulses to the dorsal cortex, which stimulates the muscles around the vessels to contract and relax, creating the open and close movement. This involuntary thermoregulatory system is very effective in dealing with the main disruption in the iguana's habitat and prevents many deaths from the cold ocean currents whilst feeding. These thermoregulation methods combined allow marine iguanas to feed on the algae located on the low tide marks. The food source thrives when the cold water currents are present because it provides more nutrients which stimulate the growth of algae. For most of the iguanas, life is ruled by the tides. However, because the bigger males have more fat, they can store more heat from the sun's rays as well as increase their heart rate to generate a temperature above all the rest, allowing them to reach the more luxurious algae that are out of reach of the smaller iguanas. They also have the ability to adapt during disruptions in the environment. Therefore, their genes will be more favourable and mean their genetic information will be passed down to future generations because they are more desirable, ensuring the survival of the species, giving these iguanas the adaptive advantage.